is the beach where I broke my neck. On a sandbar, when I dived off my surfboard. Mama's going to go for a swim in the ocean today. Is that a good idea? Do you think I should try and see if I can see some mermaids? Today will be the first day that I've actually swum in the ocean. <laughs> and I'm just, th this is kind of where my heart is. Oh, I cooked myself. Ta da! <laughs> oh, sorry, no. A delivery of hot tetra, <laughs> complete. <laughs> then, Comfy? Yeah, one more. I'm currently in the Auckland Spinal Unit and I've been here for a week. I'm paralysed from my necklace down. I have limited hand movement. I have no ability to go to the toilet, to get dressed, to do anything that is normal. So everything is being rewritten and there's a new track for the way my life rolls out. Yep. Alright. Right. Let's go. Okay. Mm -hmm. <gasps> my little girl Lola, she is three and a half. She talks to me a lot about how she doesn't like that I'm broken and wants to make me better. She says, if I give you good food and then, and if I look after you, you can get better and we can ride our bike again. I'm just going to do everything I can to get back to the kind of life that we had together before. Yay. We can't go too fast down here because Mama's driving's not that good yet. I'm a sociologist. I've just finished my master's at university and I'm heading for a PhD. I have a gorgeous partner called Gemma. How are you? Good. She gate crashed with a bunch of her mates my 30th birthday party. And we decided, actually, we kind of liked each other. And both of us, I had a husband at the time and she had a boyfriend at the time and we decided, let's just not have them anymore. So we've been together for 11 years. Yeah. Gemma had been supporting me through university previous to me having Lola. And the plan was, the minute I finished my master's, she was going to have a baby. I would then begin working, and she would be the one who would be the, the carer of our kids. Look at her. She's oh smiling. my gosh. She's smiling. Oh my gosh. Look at her. That's your mama. Look at you, cute baby. Oh my gosh. I broke my neck when baby was six days old. And so Gemma hasn't really had much time to enjoy being a mama and just to be able to sit still and hold Ziggy and just be looked after and to be nurtured and which was everything I wanted for her. I'd just come out of hospital two days earlier from the C-section and was just getting used to the whole baby, new baby and then Amanda had the accident so it was that sudden gain of a child, loss of a parent and suddenly being there to handle Lola and Ziggy on my own. So that was all very huge, scary, and not knowing what would happen to Amanda. Can't, she can't, pick her, can't pick her up. I can't comfort her. And that breaks my heart. Yeah. There you are. Yeah. You reckon? Was it work? Brown, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bubs. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I've held it like this. You get scared that it's just going to be me raising Ziggy. <laughs> but when I see bits like this, I know Amanda's going to be involved too. <laughs> you have to pick up and you have to keep going because Amanda's awesome and we're awesome together and the kids need their mums, both of them. 
so it'll be different, but it's, it'll be cool and we'll work it out. Let me see. No, more than that. It's probably a two hour mission from waking up to being ready to go anywhere. That's good, thank you very much. Yes. Now, the mission of eating. It does your head in it. Just needing so much help, I can't cut my toast, I can't spread things, and that's yet. But right now, I'm completely dependent on other people's help for everything. And I look at the program and go, right, what have I got to do to get strong so I can get out of here and get back home? So each day you're doing upper limb class and physiotherapy, and for me, hand class. So I have at least five or six hours of commitments every day. All right, so give me a hug. I've got you. Is being moved less than a metre, it blows me away that I need another help, another person to to strap me into a hoist to get from A to B. It's mind blowing. I, I never have known this world. So you're going to go up Amanda onto the side of the bed, yep. and I'm going to be behind you. So when you land, All right. you've got that support from behind. Right. I need to be able to lift myself all 72 kilos off me which currently has as much strength and stability as a newborn baby. I need to find my centre in all of that jelly feeling of no core and no balance. And those, the drop forward, it's going to be a big drop forward if I make a mistake, because I can't rescue myself. Yep, perfect. Got you. Cool. This is like sitting on a Swiss ball with your feet off the ground. So absolutely wobbly. So what I want you to do is I'm going to be in front. Yeah, I'm going to pass out. Now. Just relax back onto me. Just relax your arms. Okay. You okay? Yeah. That's weird. I was all right and then I'm not. That's really strange. Just give yourself a minute. Being upright is quite difficult in the morning. They've had to give me drugs because I have no stomach muscles to keep my blood pressure up. I have naturally really low blood pressure and I was really fit. And then you chuck a spinal injury on that and then you have scary blood pressure. That means every time you sit up, you just want to pass out. I want it to be nice and controlled rather than just throwing yourself <laughs> Yeah, funny that. OK, down to the right. Use those nice, strong lats, yes. Good. Well done. Great. And then the So again, use those lats. Good. I've got you. Got you. Cool. Well done. Look, I'm sitting up by myself for the first time since I've been here. And although it's probably a little bit weird looking, it actually feels really nice. I feel human. For me, it's about getting home and being able to be part of the family in the way that I was. I was a chef before and I do all the food and I garden and that's my role and I need to get back to that. So yeah. I've got to find a way to make that work because I love it and it makes me happy and it makes my family happy and it's my job. The fact that I so want this and I'm so focused on this, that's the way it's gonna work. I think a bad attitude would probably be the only thing that would stop you. This might look really slow to you. I'm actually getting faster and I'm getting better at it. And my hands are getting stronger and used to holding these things. I will do this a thousand times a day if it means that when I get home that I can be a productive member of my family and not a drag. We're going on adventure, baby. This is our first time. This is the first time I've been out of here. <gasps> Yay! It's huge. Yep, no, that's fine. You realise 
how broken you are when it requires a van with a back-end loader and two people to drive you to the gardens. That would be bad, yeah. Do I eat too, did I eat too much lunch? No, am I, no, it's am I too heavy? It's really heavy. All right, All right. And back on again. So that these are not oh, I can't see, see the wheels. On these tracks. Okay, cool. Yep. Probably to about. Yeah, cars were always about freedom, and now there's three people required to get me in one. A little bit distressing. The lack of control will be the hard bit for her. She's normally the one who drives, she's the leader, she does it. Freedom. Freedom in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Yeah, yeah. Can I chase you? Jump down and I'll chase you. See how fast I can go, eh? Right, get ready. Set. Go. Go faster. Go. It's quite upsetting. Although it's lovely to be out, it's upsetting. I can't catch my girl. I can't throw over my shoulder. I have to work really hard to be more. I can't come, bub. <laughs> There's stuff that I need to be aware of that I would never have thought twice about. Steepness of anything. Yeah, I just have to be careful now. It's odd, because I was six foot in real life, or just under, but there's a way of engaging with the world when you're big and strong and tall. And then now I'm on wheels and I'm motorised and I don't quite know where to put it because I had a great life. And I think I have a great life this way too, but it's going to be a different life. <laughs> There's probably more anger than she lets on to people. And she's sad. She's gutted. In terms of the realisation of where you're at, the adrenaline starts to wear off and it's almost like a leaf floating down from the sky. You have this, this kind of feeling, whoop, whoop, whoop. And reality sinks in quite slowly and all of a sudden you go, huh, so this is it. You're super high. Yeah. That's your uh -huh. way. Lola and I talk quite a bit about me being broken and what that means for her and... and Press the down one. We talk about what happened on the day, because she was at the beach when I broke my neck, which was really traumatic for her. I could hear her in the background crying when I was lying there. Lola, hmm? do you remember when Mama broke yourself? At the beach. It was pretty dumb, eh? No, sad. Oh, you were sad, weren't you? And I was sad too. You're going to help Mama get better. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, right. Okay. And my girls have uprooted their life to come up here uh, and are currently staying with some friends. Um, and we're trying to get Lola into a kindy. We're trying to get some normality because the reality is I'm going to be here for at least two to three months. Home is this gorgeous little place in Tauranga and Gemma and I have owned it for maybe seven years. We're obviously intending to stay in beautiful Tauranga and have lovely times there raising little baby and then all of a sudden, Gemma has to uproot our whole life and come up to Auckland. Our house needs changing, but do we look at somewhere else? Because we lose all our garden, we lose what we love about that home. It's not just that whole bigness of what's happened to Amanda, it's what's happened to all of us. And we're not going to go back to what we were. It's too big at the moment. You feel pulled in every single direction, so I need to protect me and make sure that I can hold the family together still. Mm -hmm. So each of the PT sessions now is purely focused on getting my, um, my transfers um, because when I leave this ward, I never, 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 never want to see a, a hoist again. A hoist, for me, is dehumanising. Right Gemma needs to learn how to hoist me. Yep. From my wheelchair to the bed, to, to learn how to do that safely. 
So that's kind of exciting. At least she, we don't need anybody else. We don't need a carer. We just need her. That's why I never want to see one of these again when I leave. Right, so what's the plan then, girls? Bring it on. Who's your daddy? Oh, good. Good. I didn't even help you that one. Now I'm stuck. Just take your time. Every day, it's just moving forward, forward. See, I don't like this, but I'm going to find a way to, to make it everything it can be. And it means that we're going to have a really full life when I get home. Maybe one bit. One. Good. Get that one, hand under and you want to push. Two. Right. <sighs> Not quite. Maybe one more. Good. Got you. Forward that one. Yes. Even from last week, this was just way better, better strength. You effectively put socks on or trousers on. <laughs> but it might take some time. <laughs> it's not like knowing before. You actually need to feel it and it doesn't yeah. make sense to your head. Yeah. Because there's no response from your body. Yeah. So you actually have to, this is a whole, this is an intellectual journey more than anything. Tonight is my first overnight leave from the spinal unit and from the hospital since I had my accident. Um, and that's hugely significant for me and Gemma as a family because we haven't spent any time together alone um, since I hurt myself. So that comes with a whole lot of joy, but it also comes with a whole lot of sadness because last time I was with them, I wasn't broken. I need to keep it real, like, well, we're allowed to be sad about this, but we also have to be happy that I'm making progress. No, 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 no
it's, it's not confronting, but it's quite odd, and I don't know quite how I feel about it yet. I think I still look like me, so that's the main bit. She'll tell you, if I'd died, you would have mourned for a bit, but you would have got on. Now you've got to live with me like this. Is it enough? It's not good enough for her. She's not happy with it, so she's going to do everything to change that situation. As everyone says, if anyone's going to get up and walk, it'll be her. I've got four days left at the unit now, and, and there's this mixed emotion of wanting to get out in the world, but also being really afraid of what that means, because we're normal in here, and there's tons of us, and you've got a community, and there's a heap of support. So, mixed emotions. You get not kicked out of here. We're supposed to leave by about one, and we don't know how to collapse the wheelchair. Still don't know how to collapse the wheelchair. OK, collapsed wheelchair, to remember that. What worries me is, is I'm just not sure who, who are the providers. I need to feel safe, yeah. and I need it to go OK, and I need there to not be dramas, cos that's horrible. And it needs to work in. We needs to work in with our family because, they, although these people are just caring for me, they also have to get on with us. They have to become kind of like part of our family because of yeah. the personal nature of what they're doing. The big thing I'm sort of feeling is the fact that when we've come back before after weekends, there's been someone else to check you. There's been that backup if I've missed anything, or now I'm like, who else checks for bed sores? Is it all my responsibility? It's just me, and that scares me a bit. I think. That transition part, for me, feels frightening. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous of it. I'm excited and I'm nervous. Yeah. Where's my baby? Where's my baby? Is she hiding? <laughs> I missed you so much. I need to have a cuddle. I missed you so much. What are we doing today, baby? Going home. And are you excited about that? I'm yeah. always excited. We're going back to a rental property while we decide what we're going to do with our house and if it's worth modifying it or if we try and build or, you know, there's a lot of... We won't be able to answer those questions until we have seen what it's like for me to be like this in our world. Empty room now. It's weird. But it's good. Someone else can come now. I can go home. Much better idea. Mm. You go well? Yeah. Well, 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 lovely, lovely, lovely to meet you. You too. Yeah. You mean? Take Go care. Well. Go well. See ya. Take care. Give me your hands. Well done. And you're a vital part of my time here. You know that, eh? Thank you. Bye. Bye. Go well. Mom, I'm hungry. You're hungry. You should have eaten some more cupcakes. Yep. I will never love this way of being. I will never accept it. I will never accept it. But what I will do is I will learn to be brilliant with it and I'm going to grow with this and I'm going to do everything I can to be really good with this. Aroha nui, eh? Right. Keep holding it, keep holding it. Now we're good, 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 cool. Come on, Lily. Yeah, I'll do it now. Don't touch. Thanks, man. Yeah. I'm actually a mum, as opposed to just... I need to go kite surfing. I think they get a better deal. My family get a better deal since I've been in a chair, cos I'm here. What did you do today? I went for a swim in the ocean, my baby. Lola is seven years old. Ziggy ran away. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's heaps like me, and Gemma laughs all the time, cos she says it's like watching you argue with yourself. So we're going to have an interesting time. Can you do the, um, can you do a little song for me or are you a bit chicken? What's she always goes, I really, I wish you had legs, Mum, and I just don't think you're trying hard enough. And I'm like, baby. 
I said, I am trying. I'm trying real hard, but um, it doesn't make a difference, you know? I said, we just have to be really good at what's going on right now. I'm so proud. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't wait to see it tomorrow, babe. Mm. Yay. Let's go. Race. Let's go. Let's catch them. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. They're too speedy. They're too speedy. Oh. And a train's gonna come. Ziggy is three. She climbs up on my knee and off we go. Digger, I know. I so wish okay. I could get on it. She doesn't know any different, you know? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, sit on that. Go. But she sees pictures of me in the past and then goes, Is that you, Amanda? Give Mum a bucket to fill up. But you got no wheelchair. And I'm like, I know. It's too this sand doesn't oh, make so sand castles, are you ready? Do you want me to try? It's good. No! I think it's tougher for partners. It's tougher for partners and it's tougher for families than it is for the people who are injured. <laughs> yeah, make the most of it, all right? It's challenged us a lot to not become your partner's carer and stay as a partner is really challenging. But in terms of our relationship, we're working really hard to, to find a new way of being, being us. The things you miss are the smallest bits. If I'm talking to her and I put my hand on her knee. And then I wouldn't respond, obviously, because I can't feel it. You forget she can't feel it, which sounds dumb, but then she doesn't think you're being attentive. But we've figured out, well, obviously, it's obvious, but she has to do things where I can see her do them. Thanks, babe, for making this work. Because I can't feel, I've still got to touch people. Because me touching them still makes them feel seen and heard and loved. I think we're good and we love each other, you know? And I'm really lucky. I don't know how lucky she is, but actually, I think she's pretty lucky. <laughs> you do cheers. Cheers. Cheers, cheers. cheers. Yay to our beautiful cheers, Claire. surroundings. I'm really grateful that I had the foundations in my old life that made this life OK. quite a strong spiritual practice. I have a really strong physical life and I've got really good support around me. So those three things, those three elements, mean that this is going to be OK. It's a resilience thing and, uh, and constantly trying to find joy and trying to find celebration and doing things you love, you know? Project, but it's secondary to be my life being good. My life is still really good. They say you can't have too much of a good thing. was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.